Very simple. It's very simple. There was no crime. There was no collusion. The big thing's collusion. Now there's no collusion. That means they set, it was a setup. When you look at Strook and Page, and they're talking about an insurance policy just in case she loses, that was the insurance you know, policy. So President Trump in that extended interview with ABC talking about the origins of the Russia investigation as a setup. Let's bring in our headliner, Georgia Republican Doug Collins, ranking member in the GT Judiciary Committee. Nice to see you in person. Just react to the interview. What did you hear in that? Well, I think you saw a feisty president who's ex who's very concerned with how this actually come went down. We've talked about this a lot. The Mueller report was everything that they the Democrats had banked on for almost two years. They said, leave it alone, don't touch it. That was all we were hearing because they believed that the Mueller report was actually going to give them the ammunition to give this president that they've hated for so long. And it didn't happen. There was no collusion. In fact, it was very forceful about that part in, in the part one. And then there was no charge of obstruction. So I think when you go back and you look at it, the American people ought to say, well, how did this happen? How did we get here? And I think he was pointing that out, that that little corrupt cabal was struck, Page and others, um, go back all the way to the Clinton mid-year investigation, but flowed right into a Russia investigation that was based on some very false premises. Yeah, I mean, the president also got a lot of heat for firing uh, Robert Mueller uh, from the FBI. Um, and it was interesting. He did talk about that firing, saying he actually was never going to fire Mueller. You're talking about Comey? Yeah, I'm talking about Comey, but okay. Trump on firing Mueller as far as talking about oh. wanting to fire him. Right, And right. the talk of all of that. Let's play some of that clip from the ABC interview. I was never going to fire Mueller. I never suggested firing Mueller. That's Do not I what he think, says. Excuse I don't care what he says. It doesn't matter. That was to show everyone what a good counsel he was. Now, he may have gotten it confused with the fact that I've always said, and I said it to you and I said it to anybody that would listen, Robert Mueller was conflicted. It was interesting because there was a lot of talk about the fact that he wanted to fire him. Will he, will he, will he not? Um, what did you take uh, on, on the president's I think it was still a sort of a consistent statement the way he had all along. I mean, he'd always had been at conflict. He didn't like the fact that he felt like his presidency was always under attack. And it was under attack from... From day one. From day one. Yeah. I and mean, really from November 16th, the day yeah. he was elected. And so I think what you see here is a man who was frustrated. There was never acted upon. He talked about it. It was talked about on Capitol Hill all the mm -hmm. time. That goes back to what I was saying earlier. The Democrats, you know, were always protecting Mueller, but at the end of the day, Mueller didn't have anything for him. I thought it was really interesting. You had, there was a clip on earlier about Ms. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Speaker Pelosi saying that impeachment would be divisive. Well, let me ask you a question. Is it more divisive to do impeachment, which is many of their members want to, or to continually every day smear a president who's doing a good job and every day bring it up in the press and, every, and bring it up with their uh, cohorts to say, this president is a, is a bad person, this person has done wrong. That's more divisive to me to this country, and I think she needs to think about that. Go back to soundbite number one, guys. Uh, um, suggesting that President Obama perhaps knew about the alleged spying on his campaign. You clearly believe there was a, a, a group of people working against you. Do you think President Obama was behind it? Uh, I would say that he certainly must have known about it because it went very high up in the chain, but you're going to find that out. I'm not going to make uh, that statement quite yet, but I would say that President Obama had to know about it. Stun, what you have found out so far, do you agree that President Obama know? I think the, there's a lot more questions to be asked there about how far did this go up. When you look at things that were happening in the beginning here, when you go back to even the mid-year investigation, this was the Clinton email investigation. When you knew for a fact, and we're finding out now that uh, the high up in the Department of Justice, Lynch and others, were saying, no, we'll never charge her, we're never, this is not going to happen. Comey preparing the exoneration even before he even interviewed Ms. Clinton. And then you take this same little group of cabal, this, this struck page, and everybody who goes into the Russia investigation were the, exactly the same people. This was not low-level investigators. This was a high level uh, of employees at DOJ and FBI who were part of this and they didn't farm any of it out goes back to what the president talked about about the insurance policy those famous texts that we see uh, going back and forth yeah, but so I, think that, I think there was a higher enough up there that it makes the concern so I think Bill Barr asking for Durham to Mr. Durham to look into this Durham is very appropriate. Durham is the outside prosecutor yes. maybe we get the IG report this week I don't know do, do you know? I think it'll probably be a little bit later I think there's still a few weeks left on the, the IG report this is what I believe Democrats are very concerned about because they know that right now they have they all they have is to paint the president in a bad light that's all they're going to do is innuendo and and without facts behind it. But they do know that the Horowitz report is going to come out and the FISA abuse part of this, where you're yes. actually taking an American citizen and using a private court or a secret court to do this when you have unverified documents, stuff that were brought before this court is a problem. And then when you go to Durham and his investigation from day one, even with classified documents now being declassified possibly by the Attorney General having that yeah. power, this is going to be an interesting time because now you see Comey and you see Baker and you see McCabe and you see these folks going out trying to rehabilitate themselves. 
I've said this before. Jim Comey's not out on the TV circuit right now because he thinks he's right. I think he's trying to rehabilitate himself because he knows when we look at what actually happened, there's going to be some problems here. I mean, the Democrats have something to worry about. If that, I, and when that IG report comes out, there really should and could be. But you, you didn't answer the question. But uh, Obama knew. I'm, I'm not sure. At, at, at this point, I think I'll agree with the president on this. It's not something that, I, that we would go with. But I think the questions know that it was much higher up than just these investigators. Yeah. I think it's what we're seeing here because we see the influence the department does, especially the former Attorney General Lynch, and then is is the her aspect there uh, in how she was actually involved in saying, well, this mm -hmm. doesn't look okay. like we can say investigation, call it an incident. Those. Kind of things like we that. want to get your take on Iran and okay. what's going on there. Uh, the United States is basically weighing military options now. I mean, it's gotten to that point. Mike Pompeo has come out and said that Tehran was responsible um, for those two tankers and those ships that were attacked and the sailors that had to be rescued. Thank God the U.S. Navy was there. Um, but what happens next with Iran? The only thing that Iran responds to is strength. And I think this is what we've seen over the years. And that's why it was so disheartening for many of us during the Obama administration, the Iran deal, which I was firmly against from day one, because you know, nothing changed there except it just slowed up their progression to nuclear power mm -hmm. and nuclear arms that they want. Now they're saying that they're going to break the, the treaty. Well, they never were really abiding by it to start with. And also, I go back just a, you know, from an old saying back where I'm from, you know, if you yell too loud, you probably got hit. And when Iran started saying it's not us, not us, but yet saw the pictures of their own uh, people going back to get the unexploded ordinance and things, uh, again, they're trying to spin a story here. This is the only thing we can do is stand up because, again, remember. Their, their economy is hurting, and I know you know that. Headline Wall Street Journal, American can face down a fragile Iran, they write. The regime is dangerous, but it isn't nearly strong enough to withstand a prolonged confrontation. We'll see where that goes. Their economy is really on bended knee. Mm -hmm. Mitch McConnell was here in the building about two hours ago. Here's what he said on immigration and how he believes the Democratic left is getting in his way on an answer. I think they're suffering from Trump derangement syndrome. You know, whatever he's for, they are reflexively against. But this is humanitarian. This is not, you know, we, we want to build a wall. We think the president's made a good case for that. That's not what this is about. This is just the humanitarian part of the problem on our side, obviously, of the border. You going to get a resolution to this? I hope so. If, not, I, if not, I want the speaker to go to El Paso like I did two weeks ago. And look into the eyes of those Border Patrol agents and those ICE officials and those folks that the customs are and tell them to, that they're enforcing the law, is forcing them to have their own issues and to forcing uh, our immigration system where people just willingly come across the border because they know that we're, we have a broken immigration system. Not just walls, not just security, but we have issues that need to be fixed. We need to get humanitarian aid there because they're coming through in droves. That's 1,100 calls from one night that I was down there. Wow. But we've got to fix the incentive for coming. That's the Flores issue, the, the detention issue, the yeah. asylum standard, and also the trafficking victims, which I have a bill to do that we can attach and move this with this uh, money, but you can't say that there's not a crisis on the border. And for the Democrats to simply do that, it tells me that immigration for them is taking these individuals who are tragically placed, and those that are still in yeah. our country, they're using them as pawns, and that's Question all is, they want. Will Pelosi acknowledge that what is happening right now in Mexico due to the president's pressure on the tariff talk is actually making a difference? They're probably going to you know, make a huge difference here. The Democrats haven't done a thing. They haven't done a thing because, again, it goes back to something for me, and I agree with, this, with Mitch McConnell on this, is that they have not even put forward this in their position. They like this as an issue. They like it as a political issue. And they're taking human lives and making them political pawns. Mm -hmm. The Democrats have to answer for this. Children Pelosi included. Has to. Children included. Yeah. All right. Congressman Doug Collins. Thank you, sir. Nice to see you in person.